in a child's pose, just kind of getting grounded before we um, start moving. Had to block the window, there was so much sunlight coming in. So just taking your knees wide, toes touching, hips pushing back, forehead on the mat, arms reaching forward. Just starting to let yourself ground down. Hips getting heavy. Feeling your connection with the earth. I said this in some of my other classes, but this is a really good pose for when you're feeling anxiety, or when you kind of feel like you're being pulled in multiple directions, or kind of just spacey and spinning out of control. Child's pose is a good one to come to. It lets you get grounded. You're kind of folding in on yourself, so you're just bringing everything back to center. You're protecting your heart. So it's a great pose for times like this. Start to bring your focus to your breath. Take in those nice, long, deep inhales. And equally long exhales. Really filling the whole body up. Letting the ribs expand, belly rise, feeling your back expand. And then on the exhale, letting the whole breath go. Releasing it fully, letting it take some tension and stress away with it. And while you're here in this position, Maybe setting an intention or saying an affirmation, something positive. And setting aside any expectations of your practice today. This practice may not look like what your practice looks like when you're at the studio a lot of outside stimuli, distractions. So just giving yourself grace today that maybe your practice doesn't look like what you want it to look like or what it normally looks like. Letting go of that thought in your mind and just allowing your body to move. Trying to keep your mind clear for just this little bit of time. Taking three more deep breaths here. And then after your third deep breath, just come up to seated, turning towards your long edge of your mat. 
taking your feet out wide. Just coming to where it's comfortable for you, not trying to stretch your legs out too far. We're not trying to come into the splits. We're not even warmed up yet. Just taking the legs out wide, maybe removing some flesh from underneath your sits bones. Trying to keep your toes pointed straight up towards the ceiling. And then just walk your hands forward and fold forward. You can let your back round. It's not about keeping your back straight here. Coming into our first yin pose, which is this wide leg forward fold. Feeling the stretch on the back of the legs, the hamstrings. Letting your head hang heavy. When you're in these yin poses, try to keep your focus on your breath or on your body, noticing sensations you're feeling. Maybe noticing if there's areas where you're holding tension and trying to consciously release that tension. You're focusing on your breath, maybe counting your inhale, and counting your exhale, trying to get them even, maybe trying to take them just one beat longer than normal. Taking three more of your own deep breaths. And at the end of the third breath, slowly walking yourself back up, bring your legs out in front, shake them out. And then if you brought a strap or a belt or, um, whatever you're going to use, you uh, get that now. We're going to come to laying on our backs. If you don't have one, that's okay. I'll give you the option. You're going to take your right leg straight up towards the ceiling. So put that strap on the sole of your foot. And then you're going to try to keep that leg straight and try to pull it in towards your face. So if you don't have a strap or anything that you can put around your foot and you can't reach for your um, toes, you can just reach behind your thigh. Just try to keep that leg straight. So trying to, to push through your thigh, push that knee 
towards the, the bottom edge of your mat and then try to pull the leg in towards you. It's again a stretch on that back of that leg. Really setting us up for that double toe hold. And then just try to settle in. So even though you're using your hands to hold on to that strap, try to release your shoulders down. Try to push your shoulders into the mat. Try to let your hips release down. Try to let the back of your body be heavy onto the mat. Try not to hold tension in your face. Release any tension in your forehead, in your eyes, in your jaw, in your cheeks. At any time, you can always just release your hands, let your arms have a little bit of a break, switch the positioning. Seeing the belly rise with the inhales. Noticing as you hold the pose, your knee might start to bend. Just bringing your focus back. Taking three more of your own deep breaths. And at the end of the third breath, bend your knee, release the strap, bring the knee into the chest, maybe rock it side to side, maybe take some circles. Maybe straighten and bend. And setting up on the other side, taking that strap to the bottom of the foot, straightening the leg, and then pulling it in towards your face. Taking notice, this side might come a little closer, might be further away. This is my bad leg. Again, try to push the shoulders down, let the hips be heavy, back is long, right leg is long on the mat.
Maybe with your breaths, you take an inhale, hold for a count of four, exhale, hold for a count of four, and then inhale again, repeat. That's called square breathing. It can help to calm the nervous system, ease anxiety. Taking three more of your own deep breaths. At the end of the third breath, bending the knee, releasing the strap, bring the knee in. Circle, straighten and bend, rock side to side. And then when you're ready, bring both knees in. Bring the spine and the hips back to neutral. And then rock forward and back. I'm going to turn just so I'm looking towards the top of my mat. So we're going to come into a half split. So you're going to have your hips be high. Your right ankle, your right ankle, your right heel is going to be out in front of you. Your right leg is going to be straight. And then bring your hands down. If your leg is straight, then you can fold forward or right. If it's not straight, then just be working on bringing it to straight. Don't worry about your chest at all. Just keep your chest high. And worry about trying to bring that leg to straight. But if it's already straight, then you can work on holding forward. We're not going to hold this as long as the other poses. It's a little more active of a pose or of a pose. So we're just going to hold this one for about a minute. But feeling that stretch in the back of your leg, keeping your hips high. And for this one, keep your feet, your, your foot, your blah, keep your foot flexed. Taking one more deep breath. Then you can push forward into that foot. Maybe just take a little movement in your hip. And 
And then when you're ready, switching it out, bringing the right knee down, left heel comes forward, hips are high, working that left leg towards straight. And then if it's straight, you can fold forward. Keeping the foot flex, stretching the hamstring. Take one more big breath. And pushing forward into that left foot. Take a little movement. And then bring that last knee back, coming into a tabletop, spreading your fingers wide. Go through a few cat cows. Inhale, drop the belly, raise the chin. Exhale, arch the back, tuck the chin. Take a few more rounds with your breath. One more round. Come back through center. On an inhale, raise your right fingertips all the way up towards the ceiling. And then on an exhale, thread it through, come down onto your right shoulder. You can use your left hand to support you. You can walk it to the top of the mat or you can wrap it around your back. On an inhale, using your left hand, pushing yourself back up. Right fingertips rise and set it down. Inhale, left fingertips rise. Exhale, thread it through. Knowing you have those same options with your right arm on this side. On an inhale, using your right hand, pushing yourself back up, left fingertips rise, set it down. Coming back to center here. You're going to take your left hand, place it underneath your face, and then step your feet back, come into a side plank on the left side here. So knowing you have options, you can come down to your forearm, you can come down to your bottom knee. No matter where you're at, trying to stack your shoulders, stack your hips, and lift up through the hips. Belly button pulls into the spine. One more big breath in. Exhale. Come down to your high plank. Right hand comes underneath the face. Open up to the side. One more big breath in. Come back to your high plank and push back to your down dog. Take some movement in this down dog. Pedal out your feet. 
Maybe take your feet a little wider than you normally do. And maybe take them closer or further away from your hands. Kind of playing around with your down dog stance. When my hamstrings are a little tighter, I like to take a wider down dog. You can see I took my feet as wide as my mat and I can bring my heels all the way down. If I come through center and come a little more narrow, I cannot bring my heels all the way down. So just noticing how each one kind of feels different for you. And then just picking where you want to be right now. Making sure your fingers are spread wide, your shoulders are engaged. So checking in with the inner elbows, the inside or the eye of your elbows, sometimes people call it. You want them either pointing towards each other or towards the top of your mat. That'll show that your shoulders are engaged. So you don't want them pointing towards the back of your mat. That means that your shoulders are not engaged and you're dumping into your hands. Then on an inhale, walking your hand, feet up to meet your hand and just holding forward. You can grab opposite elbows, you can bend your knees, and sway side to side, rock forward and back. So you might be able to go a little deeper than you normally can at the beginning of class because we did all those hamstring openers. Releasing your hands down on an inhale, slowly coming all the way up to standing, reaching up, looking up. And exhale, hands from the heart center. Closing your eyes for a moment. Sending a kind thought to yourself or someone else. Opening the eyes, inhale, reach back up. And exhale, hold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, high plank. And then taking your option, you can take a chaturanga to a cobra to down dog, or just push back to down dog, your choice. Inhale, walk or float, top of the mat. Halfway lift and fold. Inhale, coming all the way up. Dropping your right arm down by your side. Reaching the right fingertips towards your toes, then reach your left arm up towards the ceiling. Then start to fold or bend towards the right side. So really keeping both arms active. Both arms are reaching. Inhale back through center, dropping the left hand down the side, reaching those left fingers towards the toes. Reach your right hand towards the ceiling. Find that leg. And then start pulling over to the side. Both arms are working. Inhale back through center. Exhale, hold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, taking your option, meeting and down dog. Inhale, walk or float, top of the mat. Halfway lift and fold. Inhale, coming all the way up. Cactusing the arms, pulling the elbows back, squeezing the shoulders together, broaden and open the chest. Ground down through your feet, pull up on your kneecaps, pull your belly button in. And then if you want, come into a slight back bend, looking up towards the ceiling. So squeezing the shoulders together, pulling the elbows back. Inhale, reaching back up, and exhale, hold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, taking your flow or meeting it down dog. One more time, inhale, walk or float, top of the mat. Halfway lift and fold. Inhale, coming all the way up. And exhale, hold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. Taking that flow. Coming to that down dog, take a big deep breath in. And long breath out. 
Inhale, right leg rises, bend the knee, open the hip. Bringing the heel towards your butt, lifting your knee towards the ceiling, and then trying to square your chest back towards the mat. Straighten the legs, step it between your hands, lift your left heel as high as you can, come into a high lunge, but keep your hands down. So a supported high lunge. Check in with that front knee, make sure it's over your ankle, not past it. Lifting that back heel high, high, high. Keep that back leg nice and strong. Pull up on the kneecap. And then come up onto your fingertips. And then you're just gonna tap that left knee down and up. Keep the heel high. Just tap the knee nice and slow. More hamstring work here. One more time. Now you're gonna rotate that left foot into like a warrior one foot. So your full foot is on the mat. Your toes are turned out to the side a little bit. And then we're just gonna take some movement pushing back into like a pyramid pose and coming back forward. Pushing back pyramid, coming back forward into warrior one feet. Pyramid, warrior one, pyramid. One more time. Coming back into that warrior one. Drop your left knee down, untuck your toes, and then push back into that half split like we did um, during the yin portion. And then come back forward, come into your pyramid pose. So toes turn out to the side, both legs are straight. Then come back down into your runner's lunge or half splits, taking that flow a couple times. Going at your own pace. Pyramid, both legs straight, half splits. We'll do it two more times. And finish in a pyramid pose. So both legs straight, hips working towards square to the top of the mat. So pulling your right hip back, push, yeah, pushing your right hip back, pulling your left hip forward. And then walking your hands over to the left, over to the long side of your mat, turning both sets of toes towards that long side, both legs nice and long. Coming into a wide straddle, straddle, walking your hands between your feet, you're reaching through your ankles. Push through the outer edge of both feet to lift your ankles. Push through the pinky toe sides. Walking your hands back towards the top of your mat. Planting your hands, stepping your feet back. And then taking your flow or pushing back to down dog. Inhale, left leg rises, bend the knee, open the hip. Again, trying to square your chest to the mat, lifting the knee, putting a little more weight into the right heel. And then straighten the legs, step it between your hands, coming into that high lunge. So lifting the right heel as high as you can, strengthening that back leg. Check in with your front knee, make sure it's over your ankle. Coming up onto your fingertips, tapping that right knee down and up. Try to just let the back leg do the movement. Everything else stays the same. One more. Now you're gonna rotate that foot down. So coming into warrior one feet, the toes, back toes turn out about 30 degrees, pushing through that back heel. And then you're just gonna shift back into a pyramid, come back forward into that warrior one. Pyramid, warrior one.
One more time. Then drop that right knee down, push back, come into half splits again. Nice straight left leg. And taking that flow, coming into your pyramid, and then runner's lunge, half splits. Taking that flow at your own pace a few times. Hopefully you should feel the hamstrings really starting to stretch here. One more time and finish in your pyramid pose. When this pyramid pose, really paying attention, pushing the left hip back, pulling the right hip forward, pull up on both kneecaps, push through both heels. And then walking the hands over to the right, to the long edge of your mat, coming into that wide straddle, whatever that looks like for you today. Maybe your head comes down to the mat, maybe it doesn't. The wider you take your feet, the closer your head will come. Walking hands back towards the top of the mat, plant the hands, step the foot back, take your flow or push back to down dog. Take a big breath in and a long breath out. Inhale, right leg rises, stepping it forward, warrior one. Coming all the way up. Check in, front knee, over front ankle, hips working towards square, pushing through that back heel, all the way up through that back leg. Lower ribs come in, belly button pulls in, arms lift. Open to a warrior two, turning that back foot parallel to the back of the mat. Sink down low, tailbone tucks. Squeeze the shoulders together behind you. Flip your front palm, reverse reach back, straighten your front leg as you come back. Feel that reach all down the right side of the body. Reach forward, drop down, triangle pose. Both hands come to frame your front foot, bend your right knee, and then we're gonna step up in to a standing split. So, lifting your left leg, bringing your chest towards your right shin. Bending your right knee, drop your left toes down, coming into that high lunge with your hands on the ground. Then dropping your left knee down, untucking your toes, both hands come on the inside of your right foot. Step it out to the side and come down into lizard, whatever that looks like for you today. Maybe you let your knee fall out to the side. Maybe you stay up on your hands. Maybe you don't. Coming back up onto your hands, moving your foot back to the middle of your mat. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, step back, take your flow, or meet and down dog. Inhale, left leg rises, stepping it forward, warrior run. Check in with your front knee, make sure it's not falling in, push it out towards the third or fourth toe. Trying to square the hips, push through the back leg. Opening to warrior two. Again, check in with that front knee. Tuck the tailbone, pull the belly button in. Reach with both hands. 
flip your front palm, reverse reach back, straighten your front leg as you come back. Reaching forward, dropping down, triangle pose. Keep that left hip up underneath you. And stick your butt out. Both hands come down to free your front foot, bend your front knee, and then lift up into a standing split. Try and keep your hips square. Try not to let that right hip open towards the ceiling. Bend your left knee, touch your right toes down, coming into that high lunge, and then dropping the right knee down, untucking the toes. Both hands come on the inside of the left foot. Step it out to the side, lizard on this side. Again, whatever that looks like for you today, this side might look different than the last side, and that's okay too. Inhale, coming back up onto your hands, moving your foot back to the middle of your mat, tuck your back toes, lift your back knees, step back, take your flow. On an inhale, walk your feet up to meet your hands, bend your knees, come down onto your butt. We're gonna come into boat pose. So you have options. You can keep your knees bent, you can hold behind your thighs, you can have your arms leg, legs, you can have your arms long, you can have your legs long. The main thing is to be using your core to hold yourself up. So really pulling that belly button in, sitting back enough where you're engaged. Holding for three more breaths, sit up nice and tall. Try not to round your back, sit up tall. You can see me shaking. Bring your knees in, bring them down to the mat. Take a few seated cat cows, hands on the knees, round your back. Push your chest forward, round, push forward. All right, now it's time to come into that double toe hold. So I'm gonna do it facing you um, to start and then I'll do it from the other direction. So if your hamstrings are still tight, which they absolutely could be, even though we did a lot of work with them, um, a lot of us just naturally have tighter hamstrings. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna bend your knees, you wanna take your peace fingers, so your true first fingers, wrap them around your big toe, and then you want your thumb to really cover them. So not just barely touching, like not, just touching the tops of the nails. You want your thumb to come all the way around. You want to have a really good grip. And then to start, you can always just come into a more wide, kind of like a boat pose, but holding on to your legs. The hard part is to keep your spine straight. So actually maybe it's better for me to come to the side like this so you can see my spine. So you don't want your spine rounded. You want to really be pulling your shoulders back and sitting up nice and tall. Sitting up nice and tall. So you don't want to come like this. That's not good. You want to be nice and tall, long spine. So to start, you can have the legs wider. That's an easier way to do it. Also, you can have a little bend in the knees and just be working towards straight. And then to come into the full expression of the pose, you want to have your legs together, legs straight, arm or um, spine nice and strong. A lot of times people have an issue with rolling back when they come into this and that's because they're rounding their back almost always if you start to rock back it's because you're rounding your back and so now that's kind of a counter pressure is like pulling you back that way so you want to have both parts of you nice and straight and in that v um you can also use your strap to start if you have issues um with your legs being straight so you could bring your legs together Bring your strap around your feet and then start straightening. So go ahead and play with that. 
for just a few minutes. I'll give you a few minutes to play with it. If anybody has any questions, you can unmute yourself um, and let me know. If you just keep rolling back and rolling back and rolling back and you just can't stay up, then practice doing it on your back. Practice just laying on your back, doing that with the legs straight, reaching for the um, toes and trying to bring your feet closer towards your face. And then once you kind of stretch out with that, then you can try doing it sitting up again. Boat pose is a really good prep for that. Um, so to, to keep practicing on boat pose is good. You really want to keep your legs active. So pulling up on the kneecaps, strengthening the quads, but it's definitely a lot of this ab work and keeping the spine straight. You almost want to take, you can have like a little bit of a curb in your lower back curving in, but you don't want anything curving out. That's the, that's the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway that I can tell you. So pull your shoulders back, squeeze your shoulders together, and sometimes to, just to get this, you kind of have to round to start, but then once you get up, pull the shoulders back, try to broaden your chest. That'll help you stay up longer. All right. So just a couple more seconds. If you want to practice it a couple more times. And then when you're ready, we're gonna come down onto our backs. You could bring your knees into your chest, roll around, rock around, let the abs release, massage the back. And then we're gonna set up for bridge pose. So feet come hip distance apart, heels close to your butt. On an inhale, lifting the hips, lifting the middle back, trying to lift the upper back, maybe rolling your shoulders underneath you. I like to do this and rope out my arms, like make rope out arms bending at the elbows, and then really push into your upper arms. You can get a lot more lift by using that leverage to push into your arms. Try to keep your knees pointing straight towards the top of your mat. Slowly releasing down, letting the knees falling onto each other. Bridge one more time, setting the feet up again. On an inhale, lifting up, maybe taking a different arm variation. You can take your arms underneath you and clasp your hands. If you do that, push through your pinkies. So trying to keep your whole arm on the mat and use that for leverage. Or you could rope out the arms or you could grab the edges of your mat. Pretend like you're pulling your mat apart. Slowly releasing down, soles of the feet come together, knees fall out wide. Let your low back release. Bringing your knees back up. We'll come into the inversion of your choice. So you could take shoulder stand, you could take headstand, handstand, tripod. If you have a wall or something near you, you could do legs up against the wall. 
or you could just take your legs straight up towards the ceiling. Your option, just trying to get your feet above your heart for a few moments. If you took shoulder stand and you want to lower to plow, you can. You want to bend your knees and bring them next to your ears, you can. Wherever you're at, slowly rolling yourself out. Coming into a happy baby, grabbing outside edges of the feet, pulling knees in towards the armpits, pushing the tailbone down, pulling the shoulders down. Bringing your knees in back to back in together. Pulling your right knee in towards your chest, letting your left leg go long on the mat. And then on an exhale, cross your right knee over your body, open your right arm out to the side, come into a twist, push your right shoulder down. Inhale back through center, squeeze the right knee in one last time, and then switch it out. Right leg goes long, left knee comes in. On an exhale, cross it over the body, open the right arm out to the side, push through left arm. Right arm, I was right the first time. I don't know what I'm doing. Do the opposite side, because <laughs> now I feel like I just <laughs> said the wrong side. Wouldn't be a class with me if I said everything right the whole class. So there you go. Inhale, coming back through center, bringing both knees into the chest, taking whatever last movements that are calling to you when you're ready. Finding a comfortable resting position, whatever that looks like for you today. Maybe it's legs long, arms long. Maybe it's laying on your side. Maybe it's seated. Maybe it's legs up against the wall. Finding a position where you can fully release down and release any remaining tension or stress. Letting yourself feel grounded. Taking a moment to give yourself credit for showing up, making time for yourself amidst the chaos. Taking one more big breath in, long breath out, release anything not serving you, let it go, Shavasana.
slowly starting to bring your awareness back. Small movements in fingers and toes, some ankles and wrists. Rolling the head side to side. Taking the arms overhead for one last big full body stretch. When you're ready, making your way up to a seated position. Bringing your hands to heart center. I thank you for taking the time to come to class today to honor your body and your mind. And thank you for allowing me to guide you. I hope the rest of your day is peaceful and calm. Thumbs to forehead center. Namaste. Thank you, guys.